Hey everyone, welcome back to Pokemon Reborn. So last time we went around the mountains, I believe it was the Amatrine Mountain that we mainly focused on. But we went around the mountains, we waterfalled up to a bunch of different locations that we couldn't have gone to previously, and we collected some event items, event Pokemon, all that good stuff. So this time I think it's finally time that we waterfall down this waterfall right here and go to Titania and Amaria's rescue. Something interesting is if you slow down this cutscene you can actually see that Victoria notices us going down this waterfall. So anyways here we will find Titania. I think this is probably one of the goriest scenes that you'll actually see in this game. But anyways, this place is actually pretty complicated. So complicated, in fact, that I actually went ahead and made a map, which I'm going to link down below in the description. So the main gimmick for this place is raising the water levels, moving the trash around, and so forth. And actually, in this room, we're not going to do much here right now. But over here in the lower right-hand corner, you'll actually find the field readout for the murk water surface. Also, something I want to mention is my current team. Currently, we have a Rodom on the team. It knows Discharge, and that's pretty much it. That's all you really need to know. It's for an event later on. So anyways, over here, we actually have a moment with Titania. You can talk to her once, and she will monologue a bit. And you can talk to her again and give her candy. This will actually affect whether or not she joins you in a double battle later on, I believe. Something else that's interesting to note is if you give her Blue Moon ice cream, you can gain relationship points with her, basically. So I'm going to move over here and open that door right up. But as I was saying about the Blue Moon ice cream, if you don't have one right now, you can actually get one by going to the circus, and over there you want to go to the ice cream vendor, and you basically want to open and close the ice cream vendor's menu until you see Blue Moon ice cream listed there as being sold. That's still kind of on my to-do list to actually get it to open up. I gave it a solid attempt probably five episodes ago or something like that and I didn't have any luck at all. So anyways the way forward over here is actually right here. You don't want to worry about this door over here. Basically this is the gum room and the key that we need to unlock this door. We won't get the key that we need to unlock this door for a long time long time but realistically we won't be getting it anytime soon so over here we'll actually have a bit of a cutscene I'm gonna be honest Titania is probably one of my favorite characters not because she's edgy or anything like that but because there's a lot of development going on and also she's kind of pit up against a lot of characters who have kind of clashing personalities but anyways over here we have a bit of a battle to take care of once we deal with that cultist, we can actually open up the door, or not really open up the door, but access the water flow in this room. So now we actually have to move this trash piece all the way over here, and I think that's good enough. The only complaint I have about the trash puzzle is that it's a bit deceptive on where you need to actually push the trash to. Like, you should usually push it just one square below where you actually expect it to end up. So anyways, moving on into the next room over here, and we should actually have another cutscene in a double battle with Titania right here. After dealing with that battle, we can finally raise the water levels once again. So this time we... This time we actually need to move the piece of trash over here. Turn on the water levels once, and then turn it off again. And then move the piece of trash all the way over here.
And that pretty much clears this room. I believe we need to turn off the water levels one more time. That way we can block up the stairs over here, but... Now we should find ourselves back in this room, which is actually completely fine. We're going to go ahead and turn off the water levels over here, and since we can access this part of the room now, we can just run down the stairs over here and finally move these pieces of trash into place, and... I think I moved them too far north, I'm not sure. Alright, that's fine. So anyways, with that door down, we can now come back over here, turn the water levels off, and climb up these different staircases over here. And we will now find ourselves in this room, and this is where Titania will kind of suggest that we should split up. So starting over here, I'm just going to turn off that this gate right here. Or activate it, rather. Over here is actually the control panel for the water level in this room, and it's kind of key that you keep an eye on this. For now, we're actually going to let it stay up. We're going to backtrack through this room, which leads us into the first room that we entered, and move these trash pieces all the way over here. And by doing so, we should be able to actually access the upper portion of this room. Now, since we left the water flow up, we can actually cross on these pieces of trash and collect this quick ball, this pulse readout, and open the storage room, which is over here. So there should be a cell battery right there, but there's actually an interesting event in here. So you have sort of a computer right here. It won't respond, and what you have to do is you have to battle this electrode over here. It should be level 65, and you have to turn on this field. Basically, you'll be battling on a short circuit field, so you need to use a move such as Discharge to turn it into a factory field, if that makes any sense at all. Discharge, Charge Beam, while Charge, Parabolic Charge will all work. And that is the reason I actually have my Rodom here. You could try to get the Electrode to actually use Discharge on its own by putting something that's like Flying or Water type in the front slot. However, there is also the issue that you need to run away from the battle as soon as you turn on the field, because the Electrode has Self-Destruct. Or it might be Explosion, I'm not really sure which. And either of those two will actually destroy a factory field and turn it back into a short circuit field. So we don't want that. Actually, while we're at it, I will go ahead and show you the easy route to getting out of here. First, we want to actually go this way and collect the Hyper Potion that's right here, and then we can hop on over here and just go through this gate, and all we have to do is just climb up this waterfall. So if you need to heal up or if you need to access a PC, this is actually a really, really quick way to do so, and there's no consequences for it. The closest PC or healing machine is actually in the Fiora Mansion. Anyways, now that we're back down here in the grimy sewers, we're going to go ahead and move on over here back into this room and we're actually going to turn off the water this time. And I'm going to go ahead and complete this room really, really quickly so that we can actually move on back into this room and move further on. So in here there's actually a couple of trainer battles that I want to take care of before I deal with the puzzle, so I'll talk to you then. So we're back and we've cleared out this room from all the trainers, and the first thing we want to actually do is turn off the water. And we want to head all the way down into this corner and collect the smoke ball that's right there. Usually when I complete this puzzle, I can't actually access the smoke ball, so that's why I want to complete this, or grab that first, actually. 
So this puzzle is actually pretty simple. And I might have pushed one of those trash bags a little bit too far north, I'm not sure. But basically you want to kind of make a path like this that I can hop down to. Oh, that worked out, okay. And then you can go all the way around and unlock this gate. Next, we can turn the water back off and we can come all the way down here to this table right here and we can grab the barrel grid key. This is absolutely necessary. There is no way around this whatsoever. And then from here, we can walk all the way down here on the murky ground. I don't think there's any items we can get along that way. And we can make our way into this room over here. And once again, we'll have another cutscene with Titania and Taka kind of headbutting each other, and... We can finally move on. So from here, we actually have a double battle. Now, if you didn't give Titania a piece of candy earlier, I don't think she'll join you on this double battle. But because we did, she should join us on this. So anyways, Titania should push them aside and we should be able to access the next room. Here at this room, to access it, you need to have gotten the barrel grid key, which we did. So we can access it and if we come all the way up here, Titania should go on through and trap herself. And we'll basically have to rely on her for the next puzzle. So basically right here we have to push the trash bags around and I messed that up. Right, so due to messing that up earlier, I actually went ahead and moved them in their correct places and well, I had to leave the room first to reset this. But again, once you get the trash bags in the correct places, you just have to step on the square and Titania will raise the water levels automatically just for you. From here on, we have another little puzzle right here. I think this one's a little bit simpler. And once we push those into place, I believe she should raise the water levels again. And we can leave the room on that side. So over here allows us to access the bottom portion of all these rooms. We want to open that gate right there. And open this gate as well. Now once we lower the water level right here, we will encounter a Pulse Swalot. As before, I've talked about all the different ways you could deal with these one-on-one -on -one boss battles, basically. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Perish Song Prankster Murkrow. I really, really recommend that for this boss battle. This Swalot is such a pain to deal with. The reason that this Swalot is such a pain to deal with is because it becomes a water poison type with a lot of bulk. Also has water absorb, so it will constantly be healing every turn because it's on the murk water surface. Has sludge wave, discharge, infestation, and recover, which all of these moves are really, really annoying. Sludge wave can actually hit you for a good portion as well as discharge. Infestation can trap you if you're not really prepared to deal with this thing. And recover is just there. It has really good bulk. So it can tank hits really well. I wouldn't expect to go into this battle and just one shot this thing. So again, come in here with some sort of strategy. We've talked over a bunch of strategies before that you could use to deal with these one-on-one -on -one boss battles. And I'm pretty sure regardless of what kind of team you have, you could come up with something. Put the Pulse Swalot out of the way, we can actually start to clear the waters a bit. And that is something that we're going to actually have to do as well. So basically from now on, we're going to have to go to back to each and every room that we've been to. And we're going to have to drain them of the water if they're full and then refill them. And there is one item that we actually have to collect as well. So it's not a complete waste of time. And yes, you actually do have to do this to progress. So, I mean, it's not really a waste of time at all anyways. 
So over here, when you fill this room up with water, we actually want to surf and come all the way over here, and we should find the TM for Sandstorm. And I believe that's pretty much the last item that we have to collect. So something else I kind of want to mention is if you haven't caught a Alolan Muck or a Swalot or a Gulpin down here, or an Alolan Grimer, I wouldn't worry too much because you can actually still find them by surfing on the clean water anyways. So again, it doesn't really matter. So I believe we've taken care of this room already. Actually, I kind of have to check my map because I forgot which rooms that we've dealt with. That was actually pretty annoying, but I guess that kind of proved my earlier point. So anyways, we want to backtrack through this room right here. And not only do you want to restore the clean water to each room, but you also want to keep the water up. You don't want the water level to actually fall. So down over here, we want to restore the water right here. And I think I actually want to keep it down this portion. Might need to go around for that. There is an item that I actually want to get in that room, which you can obviously see. And I didn't mean to skip over it, but at the same time, I sort of forgot how you get to it. Oh, it's a stairway right here. So anyways, over here in this corner right here should be another black sludge. There was one black sludge earlier that we got before we actually took on Aya. But once we've gotten that black sludge, we want to come all the way over to this room and we want to clear this room out as well. Again, you need to make sure that you leave the water up. Do not clear the room of water as soon as you've cleaned it. So anyways, I'm just kind of backtracking right here and I should be going in through this room down here. This is actually getting pretty messy. I should have done this properly. But it's fine. We're still accomplishing everything that we're setting out to accomplish right here. So once we clear out this room, we can actually surf on the water and come around here to get the scope lens, I believe. Yep. That, there is only one last room for us to clear out. And I believe as soon as we... Oh, we actually need to come over this way. As soon as we come over this way, Titan... It was actually pretty glitchy. But as I was saying, as soon as we come over this way, Titania will automatically clear out the room and we fill it with clear water. Which means all we have to do is surf over here. And we want to surf all the way over here. Now... If you refill all the rooms with clear water, all of these gates over here will actually be open. If you missed a room, the gates will still be showing yellow marks and you won't be able to actually pass through them. Alrighty, so it is boss battle time, or technically it might not have to be. Beyond this doorway, you actually have a choice here. So we're going to encounter Taka again, and you have a choice. You either battle him now, or you battle him later. This will actually really, really affect the storyline. And the battle later might be slightly more difficult, however, there are lots of benefits to it, and I would really, really recommend that you battle him later. However, on this save file, I will be doing the battle right now. But again, there are various storyline differences. I don't know why, but for some reason they decided to have this as sort of the splitting point for the storyline. Even though certain other points would have made a bit more sense, but it kind of is how it is. So I'm going to reorder my team. I believe I want my Infernape right here in the front. I'm going to save right here, and we're good to go. This battle also happens on a factory field, which 
I don't think he has any Pokemon that could turn it into a short circuit field, so we're not going to talk about that. And we've already talked about a factory field before, so let's just move on. So there should be the cutscene, Titania should walk out on her own right here, and we will have to battle Taka. Or we could say no. Is we're going to go ahead and say yes to his request and battle him, even though you really shouldn't battle him right here. So he's going to start off with his Prankster Clef Key, it's holding leftovers, it has Thunder Wave, Spikes, Light Scream, and Foul Play, and it's really annoying. I might get hacked here. Yeah, I got hacked here. So that's unfortunate, it's going to go ahead and set up the Light Screen right there. And because it has leftovers, I can't actually knock it out right here. I could go ahead and try to mock Punch this thing, but I believe... Actually, why not? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, he gets a layer of spikes up on me. But I can deal with that. So next up is his Gliscor. It has Poison Heal, it has a Toxic Orb, it has Protect, Earthquake, Acrobatics, and Roost. I think this is actually a really defensive variant of Gliscor. I'm going to go ahead and set up a nasty plot, and he is going to break the field right there. Because I have this nasty plot up, I can basically one-shot this Gliscor through the light screen. Next up is his Minor. It has Shields Down, has White Herb, it has Shell Smash, Acrobatics, Power Gym, and Earthquake. But I should be able to one-shot this again with Blizzard right here. I hope. Alright, there we go. And next up is Komala. And I'm going to go ahead and send in my Halucha right here. Halucha has the ability Comatose. Obviously, it's the only ability it could have. As leftovers, it has Wish, Return, Sucker Punch, and Bulk Up. I'm gonna go ahead and actually Sword Stance up on this. And kind of see what I can do here. It's going to bulk up on me, which is kind of fine. I'm okay with that. And I'm going to see what I can do with the high jump kick right here. Very nice. So I knocked out the Kamala right there, and next up he's going to send in his Executor, a Lolan Executor. It has Harvest with a Citrus Berry, it has Trick Room, Dragon Hammer, Stomping Tantrum, and Seed Bomb. This Executor... Executor can be really, really annoying. I might be able to knock it out right here. <sighs> so close. I can take one hit and I might be able to... Oh, I missed. And now it's going to heal up again. Okay, that's really annoying. I'm going to use a Detect to stall out the Trick Room a little bit here. And I guess my Halooch is going to go down there. I'm going to go ahead and send in my Ninetales right here. I'm going to see what I can do with a Blizzard... Alright, he's faster than me. I kind of forgot about that. I guess I'll go ahead and send in my Meowstic right here, and... I'm going to hit it with a Psychic, because I'm faster. I really don't want to waste turns, because there's always the chance that he could harvest another Citrus Berry, and I don't want to deal with that. Or he's going to go ahead and send out his Chatot. That's completely fine. So, this is his Chatot. King Eye, a Synthetic Seed, which will raise its defense on the short circuit field, and I had to recall... I have to check, actually. I'm pretty sure it's special defense on the short circuit field, and if it's on the factory field, which is kind of unlikely because he has two Pokemon with Earthquake, but if it is, it should boost special attack. I think I honestly prefer the special defense boost right here. It has Nasty Plot, Roost, Hyper Voice, and Heat Wave. 
I'm gonna go ahead and set up a light screen. Or maybe I won't, I'm not really sure. And I'm going to hit it with a Psychic right here. And he's going to try to stall me out. That's unfortunate. And he's also faster. So that's also kind of unfortunate. I'm going to send out my Infernape right here, and we're going to see if I can mock Punch this thing down. I might get pair hacks, though. Ugh. That's unfortunate. I'll see if I can tank this Hyper Voice and Close Combat it down. There we go. I was really, really unlucky this battle, honestly. I'm gonna see if I can mock punch this Executor, and there we go. That is the Taka battle in the Water Treatment Center. And he will be very, very pleased with himself and be on his merry way. So now we get to pretty much leave this whole entire place. And I did not want to do that. I actually wanted to leave through this side. We want to make our way all the way to the entrance. Forgot to mention, but right before you go to enter the starting room, you will encounter Shade and have a little bit of a cutscene. And over here we'll actually have another cutscene where Titania will carry Emeria and they'll be off on their merry way. But besides that, I think we've done enough for one part. Thanks for watching guys, thanks for the support, and I will catch you guys later. See ya.